here's the giant void and uh, I figured, you know what? Let's take on a second project while I'm working on the fenders and let's buy some cheap Amazon ducks and let's just maybe mold that into the bumper along with the lip. What could go wrong, I thought. All right, so next day, I uh, let it cure for 24 hours. Uh, there's a chart on their website. It doesn't need to be 24 hours. It's like it's full cure for all the different thicknesses, but I think like three eighths thickness is like six hours where you can start playing with it. But again, not an immediate rush. I just let it kind of go for 24 hours. And I've started already sanding. Again, there's more than there needs to be on here. I could have, you know, made my sanding job a bit easier if I put less on here. But again, I wanted enough that I could probably try to like blend this in and have this stay kind of flush. So now I'm just going to end up taking a DA with some 60 grit, 80 grit, and just sort of get this down. Uh, if you did notice, I did f throw this over the lip. So the lip is, it's kind of locked in now. Um, I don't know if I want to do that or not. I just did it to give me the option. But if I did this, I feel like I'm going to have to do it all the way around or a thin skim coat just to like, I don't know, mold it and make it look good. But looking at it now, I don't think I'm going to want to do that. So I'm just going to end up sanding this and we'll, we'll pick back up after I get some more sanded here. Uh, and we'll see what I end up liking. I'm not too sure yet. All right. It's a small update. Uh, fender is on the car. Bumper ducting is still in the works. Uh, you can see where the fender sticks up a little bit higher than the other one. I mean, I can solve that by picking the hood up just the scotch. It's got a pretty good fitment there. As you can see, I still need to reprimer it. Um, down the side there, not perfect. It got a little crazy up at the top there. Uh, and you can see down there, the way I'm bolting it, it's kind of pulling it in a little bit. So it's not perfect, but this might suffice at least just to put on the car and then I can work on doing a mold or something. Um, this should definitely get me through. We will see. It's gonna look obviously a lot different once it's you know, primed painted. You can see I still need to kind of clean up that little radius there. Uh, let's get to priming this thing and we will go from there. It's pretty close. This is not as good as the metal fender, but uh, yeah, making progress. Totally there. We can see where I added some extra material now. Oh, there we go. So, let's actually get a little bit closer, but enough that I will be able to um, here's the actual bumper. So again, we're gonna have to just smooth a little bit of that out, but I think we're almost there. I'm just gonna not show you guys it, but I'm just gonna take some sandpaper, uh, smooth that out, smooth this out, and I will resume once that's there. Now it hasn't totally cured, it should be 24 hours. We're probably at like 16 or 18, but it should be good enough to work on. So catch you guys back up in a couple minutes. All right, so here it is. Uh, since then I did some, uh, two coats of high blood primer, did like a coat and a half of actual base. I kind of ran out of base. I have a hole that can, but I just don't want to open it. And then I did three coats of clear. You can see it's not terrible, but there's definitely some orange peel, not the end of the world. Um, I do want to do the black stripes because I don't really tie this together. And uh, so right now I'm just gonna wet sand this with some 1200 and work my way up, maybe just to like 2500 real quick. I'm gonna do this real quick and dirty. Uh, yeah, nothing crazy. We're just gonna get there so we can actually get this thing mounted in the car already. All right, so it's roughly on there, kind of wet sand it for the most part. I got some tape on my shirt just to kind of reduce some of the stickiness since it's freshly painted and we're just gonna kinda eyeball this just like we did the last ones. If you watch my video where I made them. All right. All right, I'll spray it up. It's been sitting for about a minute now. I'm trying to get it off while it's still dry. Not that I didn't try, but. Okay, it tapes a little more on there than I thought. The tape one might be better than the actual fender when I made it. All right. Again, if you can already see it, there are some issues, and I will show them to you closer. But let's mount this thing up, let's give it a quick buff, and just be done with the friggin' fender already.
All right, so here it is mounted up. As you can see, the fender has quite a bit of play. And I added a little tab. Ignore this back left one that my hand's on. But this one kind of goes under. And I just put a rib nut up into the frame there. So, so again, the molded ones, I'll try to perfect a little bit there. And again, as you can see, I got a little crazy when I sanded here. The molds won't have to deal with that. But again, it's on there. Let's do a little door check. Cool. Now the gap is a bit bigger at the bottom there, I know. Um, all right, so let's get to polishing this thing. All right, so I didn't film any of that. If you watch any past videos, just look up like how to cut and buff. Again, I only went up to a, when I say dirty 2000, I just did a quick scuff, not show cards, needed to get it to be a little shinier, I guess. Uh, and here's what it looks like right now. There she is, man. She's mounted again. Up there is a little cut, a little funny. For those of you that are curious, because it's I did a ABS like uh, I want to say I did eighth inch maybe I forgot either eighth inch or sixteenth inch plastic spacer to space the outside out, and I've only got one bolt up there in the middle, and I've got the one down there. Um, if you push in the middle here, I probably can't see the camera, but it flexes down there. But again, I don't think it's like I mean it's going to be on the car. Uh, yeah, so let's fast forward over to the bumper now. Bumper's been drying. This should be the last reiteration. Put some more of that free form air there. I'm gonna take this out. We're gonna sand it. And uh, hopefully we'll be good to go and not find any crazy low spots. So there's a couple of them, little ones here and there. I'm still gonna paint it black and just full send it because today is Thursday. Saturday we have a race. And uh, again, I don't know if I'm giving up on this car for that's watching like, oh, it was so clean, it was this and that. It's still pretty clean, I think. Um, I just got to be okay with some things and uh, maybe in the wintertime I can take some stuff off and perfect them. But again, if I end up molding the fenders, right, I will perfect the actual metal one a bit better. So let's get to working on this bumper. I'm dreading. I just want to be done here in the next, it's 1043. If I could be done by one, clean up the garage, you know, whatever, bumper, car just reassembled, that'd be fantastic. I can pull the cars out, wash them, and then just do nothing on Friday. All right, let's get to sanding. So if you follow when I made this original fender, you can see, oh, there's still some PVA there. You can see when I left this uh, fender liner tab and what I did was I shot a rib nut into it. And I did that because my tire spats, when I made them, and this kind of comes up here and I put a hole in the top here and that would screw into the rib nut. So I got here, two into the bumper uh, and then one up into the fender. Now. Obviously, the way I did this, there is not one. So, cut another piece of just some uh, 16th ABS plastic, and I kind of eyeballed roughly where that's going to be. And I marked, maybe you can or cannot see it. There's two yellow lines there. So, I'm going to pull the fender back off real quick, and I'm going to epoxy this in there, and then I will drill it and put a ribbon in there as necessary. So, fender's off, and of course, one of the spots where I've reinforced some fiberglass on the back where it's messed up is exactly where this needs to roughly go, of course. So, figure something out there. I might have to just grind that away gently. All right, so here it is. Quick glance, it looks okay. Um, obviously, if you don't know, black really shows imperfection. So, let's get a little closer there. Look at that. Look at that. Definitely needed to sand and scuff more. Um, kind of hard to tell in all those different colors. Should you prime it and stuff? Absolutely. The side doesn't look terrible. Up there a little bit. There is definitely bad. Um, come over here. There you go. Same thing. There you go. Now that I'm really close at it, same thing. Down the side. Got a couple pit holes. This is absolutely not one of my best jobs. But I got a feeling if you're in the right lighting, you won't even notice. And uh, if anything, it'll be a good base for me to work on later on during the winter and this will get me through the rest of the season or for the time being put some cool stickers there i don't know something craziness but let's let this dry uh this was just two coats of sem i didn't even spray it with primer if i did throw some high build primer on there it very potentially would have at least filled the transitions uh the little divots like right there definitely would not have god dang that's dead <laughs> oh man i can't even make this up so exhausted so pumped up i'm like okay it's all back together let's see what it looks like and crazy, right? How do I put my splitter rods on there? 
Son of a gun. Ugh. I mean, here's the one that, uh, the one that goes like this. Where does that gonna go? No friggin' idea. Guess I gotta put a hole in there. Son of a gun. All right, so that side is done. Hard to tell, but basically what I did was I drilled a three quarter inch hole there, then took a half inch drill bit and just sort of opened it up to be a slot. Sort of the same thing I'm doing here now. As you can see, I made the hole. I'm trying to get the angle, but I can't get the exact angle, so I drew a little bit of a, a little paint pen there. I'm gonna pull that out, we're gonna do the same thing. Could it be cleaner? Uh, maybe, it's a quick and dirty fix. This whole bumper's been dirty, this whole thing's Swiss cheese. Able to come through or not, but oh yeah, look at that. Look at the look at the door. There is so much. Look at that. I, I, so I have been primarily sanding outside, yes. But my wife cracks the door open a lot and we hang out in the garage with the doors open and we haven't raced in like a month. I did take it to the gym like the first two days after getting back and after that I've been working on the fender, I feel like, just here and there. So let's get this thing outside and just hose it off. All right, first, just gonna be totally honest, I am exhausted. Uh, mentally, physically, I'm just exhausted right now. Uh, today is Thursday, it is now like five o'clock or four o'clock, something. I don't even know, I lost track of time. Um, and I wanna be done with this way earlier in the day. This video is all over the place. It, can, it took a place over maybe like, I don't know, one and a half weeks, which was not enough time. I don't know why I did this to myself. Any of these big YouTuber dudes out there, girls, whatever, that uh, put themselves in these crunch lines and try to get stuff done. I don't admire you for it. Uh, again, this is all my choice, so I'm prefacing that with, the fender, I'm gonna give like a seven and a half out of 10. And the bumper, I'm gonna give like a six out of 10 maybe. So here we go. So the fender's in the car, right? Quick glance. I mean, it, I'm sure you probably don't even know. Uh, again, we're gonna go up here. You can see I trimmed a little too much away up there. And at the bottom, I got a little crazy. And I had to do that because again, I made a negative. I mean, it was a little big and I had to sort of sand stuff to get it to fit there. I could have also fixed that wheel arch just a little bit, but again, can't probably notice that. Um, corner light fits pretty good. Uh, the only thing is you can see again right there, the hood sticks up a little bit, but I can sort of just do that and it'll be okay. Um, overall, again, the fender's not terrible. Um, if I push on it again, let's see if I can get you to actually be able to see that without me holding it. Let's zoom in. It's gonna flex. If it's gonna, well, when it flexes, it's gonna flex down by where the cutout is. So, but I mean, the fender's stout. I mean, it was stout enough that I was able to, you know, run a buffer over it real quick. All right, so, you know what, I'm gonna downgrade this to like a five out of 10. The bumper's just gonna be, a, it's a concept to see if I even like it. Um, I don't know right now, let's see, let it grow on me. Um, yeah, let's just see here. So, tons of issues. Uh, the freeform air putty I used at one point, I did not let cure all the way. That's what it looks like, right? From a quick glance, it's not terrible. The duct is kind of hidden. Um, you know, I don't know. But I got this whole thing again, pulls it up. Forgot about the splitter rods. So you can kind of see I made like a little port there. I think that kind of came out okay. Doesn't look that bad. Uh, the other side now. This is where I think the freeform putty didn't dry all the way. I was making it, making it, and then, boom, explosion. Um, there is no time to fix it, not a point. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, I don't think you'll even notice it for the most part, but uh, yeah. That's what it looks like on the front. I don't know. I don't know, but all right, so... For those of you asking about a mold, I've had tons of Instagram messages from people and that's super cool. Um, what I just did, the negative version of this, there's no way 
I would do this for people, not because I'm greedy or don't like anybody, just too time consuming. Doable, 100%. Um, if you were a buddy and you lived near me, I, I mean, honestly, to do it, to re just skin it again, I don't know, with cure time, I'm pulling it off four hours total, maybe? Um, so that's not bad. And then you can spend the next day just kind of trimming it up, getting it to fit. Um, you know, it's just, it's not worth it to me to do that. Um, so looking into the mold thing, um, my cousin told me to do the molds from the get go. I didn't want to do it. Um, just cause I wanted to kind of learn things the, the rough way and just sort of see how things come about. Uh, it's just the way I like to learn. So with the molds in mind, um, his game plan is a silicone mold. That's what he prefers me to do. It's what he does. He does it for a living. He does all kinds of interesting, cool stuff. Did Universal Studios, makes tiki mugs. It is what it is. I totally trust him. Um, the biggest debate is, right? Like, it's not that I don't want to do them. It's, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say about the fenders is, I'm kind of OCD, um, which has been really difficult with the car because the more and more I've been racing it, taking it apart, you know, just simple things like that. There's issues in the car. Yeah, overall, I like the car the way it looks. It looks really good. It's very clean, I think, for a race car. Um, yada, yada. So I guess, again, I'm rambling. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, with the fenders, before I sold them or made molds, like, I, you know, I'd ha it's, it's going to be very difficult for me to make them so perfect that I'm okay with it. I'm just going to be honest about it. So, and, and here's an example. So here's this fender. And I knew I did this when I did it. It was just, I, I was so far committed. And at quick glance, it's not a big deal. Look at that. All right, you see how the curvature of the fender there does not match the car door? I'm really maybe nitpicking. Again, looking at it from the side, just staring at it like it looks fine. I mean, again, hindsight, there's really nothing, there's not that terrible. That just, you know, I, I don't know. And that's something I don't need to worry about, but I, I just would hate to sell a product and then it's just like, uh, you know, whatever. Right, and again, They'd be made out of fiberglass, most likely. Um, they'd have a gel coat on them, just like you would buy like any aftermarket body kit. Um, and there would be some trimming required, right? Like, I mean, maybe some small things here and there to fit somebody else's car because of whatever. But uh, see, like, I'm just noticing it now. Like, I know I'm rambling, but just be upfront about it. All right, so don't get me wrong. This is the fiberglass version, not the exact, you know, but all right, I'm happy with that. It comes out. I would probably do some test fitting. I could probably shove a 15 by 10 or neat there, I think. I don't know. Now, the way I hooked this back, just the way that I had it bolted up to the car that day, like, here you go, here's an example. We look straight down. See like how this one kind of comes in a little bit, the end kicks in a little bit. The center where the tire would rub is totally tucked, right? Come over to this one, same thing. But if you notice, look at that. This one comes out past the tire. I don't know what I did when I made it. I mean, you'll, again, I'm really nitpicking. This would have to be extended out. End of the world, no more work, sure. Um, or I could just take that steel fender over there, you know what I mean, and just, I don't know, just make two brand new complete fenders um, from scratch. Same idea, but just really work on those to perfect them. I, I don't know. I'm rambling. These are the things that would like bother me of selling a set, right? And, and it's because they're handmade. That's the kicker. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at it. But I mean, what I would do is I've been watching some stuff, talking to my cousin and everything else. Um, what I'd love to do is I probably won't run them on my car because I don't think I would need anything wider than a 225 on the rear. But it would be cool to make some over fenders in the back that maybe kind of come from here, that maybe cut off right here at the molding. Um, Fiberworks does make a pair over in the UK that look really awesome. Um, but I think I would make them just to match exactly how I sort of did that. And then again, you could either bolt in 3M, whatever the case. I don't know. I'm getting crazy here. I'm having a good time playing with this fiberglass stuff. It sucks at the same time. I, like, I'm done with it, I'm going to say right now. I don't want to fuck with it again. I just want to race. I don't know, I'm ranting. I'm just, I'm exhausted. Appreciate everybody for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, put them down there below. If I can perfect these fenders, let me know what do you guys think a price tag would be that they could even sell them at. Um, I'd love to put these fenders or even that metal one on a car that does not have, you know, uh, tire spats and stuff and just see what it looks like on a 
more of a stock looking CRX. Um, but again, appreciate everybody for watching. Sorry if this video is all over the place because I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it's just I kind of try to get a lot done in less than two weeks between working and everything else. So as usual though, I do appreciate everybody. Uh, stay tuned next, I guess, you know, two days from now will be a track day. Let's see how good my cooling ducks actually do on the track if you followed my last video. Fingers crossed that it's mint. See you guys later.